Hey everybody, Mr. Troy here. It's time for Mr. Troy Does Math, a chill video series where I do some math so you can see how I think. Here we go. All right, so we're gonna look at a few different log and exponent problems. Uh, most of the problems I won't have seen, although I did pull up this one because I thought it was really interesting. If you get stuck on a logarithm problem, try switching it into exponential form. So, for example, I've got log base 9 of x equals negative 3. Now, this can make you think that there's going to be no solution um, because of the negative here and the domain can get kind of confusing. But what this means is that using a base of 9, I reach some number using the exponent of negative 3. Well, I know what 9 to the negative 3 is. Since 9 to the third is 729, 9 to the negative 3 is 1 over 729. So let's give that one a try. Fingers crossed, people. Ah, uh, heyo. So what they did was they switched it from log form to exponential form. I think that's a really good strategy. That's kind of how I was thinking about it. All right, here's another one. Now I didn't pull this one up ahead of time, so I might have to think my way a little bit through it. I've got log base x of 1 64th equals negative 3 fourths. And what this means is that there's some number x that when I raise it to the negative 3 fourths power, I get 1 64th. Now, I can either just kind of try and logic my way through this, or I can use what we learned in an earlier unit to deal with that negative 3 fourth power. So I'm going to raise everything to the negative 4 thirds power. Because that's how we deal with a rational exponent in an equation. The negative is going to flip that up into the numerator. So 64 to the positive 4 thirds. The 3 in the denominator is going to take the cube root, which is 4. And then 4 to the 4th is 256, I hope. Don't have a calculator in front of me. Well, I, I do, but I'm not using it. Nice. Let's see how they did it. Okay, so they switched into exponent. Hey, well, that work looks exactly like my own. Good job, Delta Math. Okay, so this is a type of problem that I've technically never seen before. Um, so this should be brand new. A culture of bacteria has an initial population of 160 bacteria, and it doubles every eight hours. So we've got this formula, P sub T is the population after time, P sub zero is the initial population, T is the time in hours, and D is the doubling time. Um, and that's in hours. So what is the population of bacteria in the culture after nine hours? So it should be like between 320 and I mean, it should be pretty close to, but more than 320. Um, I was gonna estimate a little bit more carefully, but I'm a little worried about doing that wrong on video. So 
I've got a P sub zero of 160 times two, and it's like, I think it's gonna be T over eight. Um, because it just says D is the doubling time, and that's eight hours, and that's gonna give me my P sub T. So now it's asking what happens when t equals nine? Well, let's figure out. So p sub t equals 160 times two to the nine eighths. And now it wants me to round to the nearest whole number. Just a second, I'm gonna pull up a calculator. All right, let's give this a try. So I've got 160 times two to the nine eighths. I've got 348.96, so 349. And my original guess was gonna be between 320 and 350. So like, I'm really upset with myself that I didn't make that guess. Let's see if I'm right though. Fingers crossed. Yes, okay. Yep, just filling in all those numbers. They got the same number as me. Nice, I like it. That's a cool problem. All right, and we'll do one more. This is like a new problem to me. Um, we'll do something like this later in the unit, but uh, I didn't like cherry pick these numbers or anything. So it says write an exponential function of the form y equals a times b to the x that goes through the points 0, 7, and 3, 875. So just to kind of give some background on that, it says a times b to the x, which means its asymptote is going to be at y equals 0 because there's no vertical shift here and 0, 7, and 3, 8, 75 means that it's gonna be growth. So when they give me two points, y equals a times b to the x, I'm thinking of plugging those in. So 7 equals a times b to the 0 well, b to the zero is one, so that means a equals seven. Nice. And let's see, 875 equals seven times b to the third, is that right? My x value is three, okay. So I'm gonna divide by seven. And I'm, I should probably know how to do uh, 875 divided by seven in my head, but I don't, 875 divided by seven. Someone at home is sitting there screaming at me that they know what the answer is. So I get 125, yeah, that makes sense equals b cubed. Well, just by inspection, that would have to be b equals five. So my equation is gonna be y equals seven times five to the x. y equals seven times five to the x. Am I right? Fingers crossed. Hooray! All right, that's enough math for one day. Folks, I hope that that was helpful, and I will see you later. Enjoy the theme music on the way out.